Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes so far in the MCU were the definitions of sidekicks. Often their stories, while engaging, were written to serve the larger character arc of Steve Rogers. So the announcement of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier had me excited that we would finally get a more in-depth look into these characters who for so long had been cast to the side. This especially pertained to Sam, who ever since Captain America the Winter Soldier has been given very little to work with. Yes, there's been fun cameos and great one-liners, but nothing of real gravitas. He was always there to serve someone else's story. Heading into the show, it was obvious that Marvel would have to touch upon race, but what's surprising is how poignant and head-on the story is in confronting racism and tackling issues surrounding race that are extremely relevant and timely in our modern-day society. While WandaVision echoed the feelings of the pandemic, of living in our own bubbles, Falcon and the Winter Soldier channels the ongoing fight for black equality, which has been at the forefront of American media, especially in the past year. The theme that this show exemplifies through Sam's character and his interactions is the idea of tradition versus change. The importance and meaning of Captain America's shield and what this piece of American iconography means to different people plays deeply into this theme. Specifically, when Sam comes face to face with Isaiah Bradley, the audience is invited to take another look at what the shield represents. Isaiah Bradley, we learn, has a backstory which sounds uncannily familiar, with his comrades captured by an enemy lines and his superior officers indifferent and worse as to what happens of them, he defies orders to go and save his fellow soldiers. But unlike Steve, who was heralded as a war hero and went on to fight in World War II, we learn that Isaiah was thrown into jail and experimented on for 30 years, his story long forgotten and never told, a prime example of black erasure. These experiences Isaiah has gone through have shaped his view on race relations in America, and in this conversation between the two black men, we see dueling ideologies when it comes to race. Isaiah very much believing that racism is systemic and nothing can be done to change that, what once was will always be, and moreover, why should someone then be a symbol for a country that has never done anything for him? They will never let a black man be Captain America. And even if they did, no self-respecting black man would ever want to be. Sam, on the other hand, resonates with what Isaiah tells him and understands that if he went through the same thing, he may feel different, but he is choosing to have a hopeful optimism that things can change. In episode one, we see the turmoil Sam is under debating what he should do with the shield. But finally, after months of holding on to the shield, we see him give it away to be displayed and in his speech he says, Symbols are nothing without the women and men that give them meaning. And this thing I don't know if there's ever been a greater symbol. Sam is having his own internal battle with what the shield represents to him. To Sam, Steve was the symbol, not the shield. It was Steve who upheld the heroic ideals to always do the right thing, whatever it takes. Someone who truly cared about every life, not just their own. The shield was simply branding for a man who gave it meaning. And over the course of the series, we see that this is Sam's fear. He knows what that flag represents to many African Americans, like Isaiah, and the traditions that are associated with it. And Sam is scared of changing this symbol by giving it new meaning. Without Steve, that shield means something completely different until someone takes the mantle and instills the shield with values and ideals that Steve believed in. Insert John Walker After Sam has given up the shield to be displayed, the US government swiftly decides they have other plans and introduce a new Captain America in the form of John Walker. While Sam serves as this idea of change throughout the show, Walker is the symbol of tradition. He is the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Captain America the world is used to, just maybe lacking in the morals department a little. Walker serves as the anti-Steve Rogers. He is a three-time Medal of Honor winner and incredibly strong, yet lacks the morals and integrity Steve had in abundance. Thus juxtaposing Steve when we first meet him in Captain America the First Avenger, as a man of heart but lacking in strength. Steve stood for always doing the morally right thing, but now that the ideals behind the shield are no longer present, the morals held by the country the shield represents are less clear-cut and often more violent. Not to mention the obvious choice of the lack of white in his costume. White in the American flag is symbolic for purity and innocence, 
while the red and blue symbolise valour and justice, hinting at the fact that Walker will do whatever it takes to achieve peace, even through compromising means. The symbolism is taken a step further, with Walker's costume at the end, when we see him become US agent. Walker says, It's the same, but black. Furthering this idea that the US government wants to hold on to the idea of tradition, but in doing so they've not only lost all purity, but have now turned that innocence into a symbol of despair and darkness. Walker is essentially, for most of the show, a surrogate for the ideals upheld by the government. He's so far integrated with the government that his ideals are non-existent, and are purely those which are held by whoever is telling them to him. Where the Flag Smashers represent the globalisation of the world, John Walker is a representative for pro-nationalism, being used as a publicity stunt to channel the thoughts of the leaders in control of him. Until that is, when John gets blood on the shield. He's then stripped of his title. However, there is the question of, if it wasn't in broad daylight, in front of the public, would the government have had the same reaction? Interestingly though, after this, in the final episode, when John is under no one's control, that is when we see him have a change in heart, and try to save the truck instead of taking down Carly. This is to further the idea that unlike Steve who was the morals behind the shield, the man making the decisions for the most part for John is the government, who are only working in their self-interest. Yet left to his own devices, Walker seems to have some moral backbone. Yet Walker ends right back up in the hands of another corrupt leader, as his desire to be greater and recognised for his actions takes over. Walker represents exactly what Zemo feared, a morally corrupt man who has a complete desire for power, whatever it takes. As Zemo puts it, The desire to become a superhuman cannot be separated from supremacist ideals. While Zemo here isn't referring to racial supremacy per se, it's interesting to recontextualise John up until he takes the serum as symbolising racial supremacist ideals. John is surrounded by supportive people of colour in his life. His wife and his best friend both support John and his uptake of the mantle of Captain America. Yet especially with Lamar, he's there as a sidekick to John's story, as someone meant to motivate John's actions. Even his death is the reason John is provoked into killing someone in front of people. John becoming Captain America and getting the super soldier serum is also the result of two black men. Sam giving the shield that eventually makes it into his hands and the serum being a direct result of the testing done on Isaiah Bradley. This creates an interesting parallel with the Steve and Isaiah storyline, whereby Steve, John in this case, is glorified and adored by the American people, while the people of colour who helped him get there, or were heroes in their own right, have been overshadowed. Hence why it means so much for Sam to take on the mantle of Captain America, to be this symbol of change to uphold a piece of imagery that is so saturated with meaning and history, and to be giving it a new definition. Sam is aware of the deep history and resilience many have had to the Stars and Stripes, and the hostilities he'll face from people being a black man holding the shield. But as he so eloquently puts it in his speech, we can do better. And that's ultimately Falcon's philosophy and arc throughout the show. He believes things can get better, and that he can be a part of that change to make things better. It's why he makes sure Isaiah is remembered by placing his story in the museum. Not only is Sam changing the future for the better, but he's also remembering the people that came before him. Because at the end of the day, Sam isn't someone who's been enhanced by a serum. Sam represents the everyman, someone who is living an ordinary life, but also someone who chooses to stand up and fight for what's right. Someone who chooses to get up and plant themselves and doesn't compromise what they believe in. Someone who wants to enact change and make the world a better place. Someone the world should look up to. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And also, let me know what you thought about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I really enjoyed Sam's story throughout and thought it was a great arc for him taking up the mantle of Captain America. And Bucky's story with grief and learning to live with the things he's done as the Winter Soldier, taking ownership of his past, I thought was great. I did think the Flag Smashers storyline was kind of weak, but we'd love to hear your takes on it. And don't forget to let me know in the comments below what you found in frames.